Hello everyone, welcome back to Quick Coding Bytes. Today, we'll be looking at another topic that is covered in the American Computer Science League contests, bit string flicking. So the first question that we would have to answer is what are bit strings? Well, bit strings are strings of ones and zeros. They represent bits and memory locations in your programs. ACSL questions generally ask you to manipulate these bit strings using basic bitwise operators and shift operators. So let's first just take a look at an example of a bit string. So I can define a bit string with just a string of ones and zeros. So for example, one zero one one zero one. So that's all bit strings are. They're just simple uh, strings of ones and zeros, which then you can use operators on to produce an output bit string that will be different from the inputs. Now that we know what a bit string is, let's learn about the operators that are used with bit strings. So the first class of operators that we're going to look at are bitwise operators. So bitwise operators are operators which are performed to each bit individually. They're similar to Boolean operators as there is a NOT, AND, OR, and an XOR. To perform the operator, you align two bit strings with each other. And so an example of this is, let's say this is one of the bit strings that I have. Another bit string I have, um, let's say it's zero here, zero here, and one here. So I create these two bit strings. So the first uh, operator that we're going to look at, the first bitwise operator that we're going to look at is the OR operator. The OR operator. So if you guys remember what the truth table for OR is, um, if it's 0, 0, the output is 0. If it's 0, 1, the output is 1. If it's 1, 0, the output is 1. And if it's 1, 1, the output is still 1. So if uh, in a real scenario uh, or in an ACSL contest, they're not written on top of each other. Rather, they're written in the following manner. So they'll generally have, have it like this. And then in the middle, you'll see uh, something written like this. So all the operators are generally written like this, where you have a bit string, then they put the operator in the middle, and then the other input bit string. So when you're doing this, what you want to do is you just want to bring the other bit string right underneath it, so all the bits align. And then you just you just uh, follow this truth table. So 1, 0 is a 1, 0, 0 is a 0, 1, 1 is a 1, 1, 0 is a 1, 0, 1 is a 1, and 1, 1 is a 1. So the resulting bit string of that operation is this. The same rules are applied to not and an XOR. I'm not going to go through the examples as I made an earlier video talking about Boolean algebra. So make sure to go watch that. I'll probably link it in the description box below. The next class of operators that we have to look at are something called shift operators. Uh, shift operators. Shift operators. So what are shift operators? So shift operators are manipulating a single uh, bit string. So you don't need two bit strings for these operators. You only need one. So let's create a sample bit string again. So we have 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is the bit string that we have. And in shift operators, there's uh, two different types or groups of operators. There's four operators in total, but there's two groups, and each group has two more. So the first one I would like to talk about are circle operators. So the how there's two flavors of circle uh, operators. It's R, uh, R, R circle dash X, and then L cir circle dash X. So what does a dash X represent? 
the x is just going to be a number. So either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on. So what does circle mean? So circle is basically you start at one point and you go around another point. And the r and the l represent the direction, so right or left. So now let's break this apart. So if we had, for example, in front of this uh, bit string, we had r circle dash 2. So what this is saying is you have to circle this the bits in this bit string. Oh, whoops. You have to circle the bits in this bit string uh, two spots. So how I like to think about this is, OK, if I'm going to circle right, that means I have to go in this direction, correct? Because that's right. So this would go here and here, because they're moving two spots. So it wouldn't go here, it would go here. So this 0 would be in here. This 1 would move right next to it. This one would move right next to it. This zero would move right next to it. This one would move right next to it. Now these two. Well, when I'm shifting these two, if I go here, and the second place I have to go to. The second place, there's the second shift that I would do, or the second circle I would do, means you would go all the way back to the beginning. So this zero actually gets put here, and this one. So this one, the first time it moves, it's going to go to this position. The second time it moves, it's going to go to this position. So if you right circle this bit string, it turns into 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So I hope you kind of, you kind of, it makes sense in your head that you basically circle the bits around. So if I were to give you another example, uh, instead of our circle, let's say it was L circle and three. Now what would you do in that case? So move this. Oh, let's see. Come on. Ah, whatever. I'm just going to erase it then, I guess. Okay. So L circle three. So in fact, when you right circle uh, or left circle, you can't, you, you move in this direction, right? So let's go through in um, left circle three. So let's look at this bit. So this bit, if you go left, well, there's no, no other bit to the left of it. So you're going to shift here to, or you're going to move there. So that's one, that's two, and this three. So this is written here, this zero. How I like to do it, another way to visualize this is, actually I'm going to undo. Another way to look at it or the, another way to do it is you basically skip these three, right? Because um, since you're left circling by three. So you go to the left three bits, you just leave them alone, and then you just copy this entire string over. So it's, so you skip these three bits and you copy the rest over, zero, one, zero, one. And then what you do is then you just take this and just insert it right at the end. So this is kind of a quick shortcut to it. So if it was four, then you'd skip the first four. And if it was right circle, then you'd, you'd take the end and you hold them off to the side. So this is kind of like a quick shortcut to do left circle and right circle. So this is the first section of shift operators in this topic. So the last group of operators that we have to look at are shift or actually pure shift operators. So again, they come in two different flavors. Uh, so there's going to be R shift dash X and L shift dash x. Again, both of these are going to act very similar to circle, but there's a slight but important difference. So x would represent how many bits you're going to shift, and r represents right, and l represents left. So let's do an example. So let's say it said uh, r shift r shift um, 3. That means you're shifting 3. So when you mean right, that means I'm going to go or I'm going to go this way. And now I didn't draw a circle. So it's not circling. This is just shifting. So let's actually start from this bit. So if you shift three, you're not circling. So this is not going to go back up here. When you shift, that means you lose this bit. So this bit's actually gone. Same with this. This bit's also gone. When you shift, try to shift three over, this bit's gone. 
And same with this. So when you shift three, this bit, there's no other bit after this. And since you're not circling, this bit's also gone. And now when you shift these over, well then it's just going to be zero, one, one, zero. But we're still missing these three bits, right? Well, because you're circling and not shifting, when you shift these bits out, you replace them on the other side with a zero. So this actually would be three other zeros here. So since you're not circling, these bits get removed. And when these bits get removed, on the opposite side, you just insert a zero. So let's do another example. You just erase this. And let's see. Let me move this. And let's remove this, this, this. OK. So let's say instead of R shift, we had left shift two. Well, it's going to be very similar. So this time you're going this way. Uh, let's start with this. So if you shift left, there's no other bits here. So this bit gets removed. Again, if you shift twice, this bit's going to get removed because there's no bit here, bits or bit there. And then you can just copy the rest over. So it'd be one, zero, one, zero one and again since we shifted these out and we didn't circle then you replace on the other side bit zero so left shift two of that original bit string would turn, look like this so the last thing i want to do in this video is go over one example of an acso like problem but before i do that i just want to mention the order of precedence so the order of precedence when using these operators from highest to lowest would be the not shift and circle, and XOR, and finally OR. Basically, all unary operators or operators with just one input are performed on a single operator first. Operators with equal precedence are evaluated from left to right. All urinary operators bind from right to left. So you just remember that note when you're doing these. But generally, especially in ACSL contest, they're parenthesized, so you never really have to worry about it and the order of precedence is same as all regular programming and other uh, algorithmic related uh, questions. So let's attempt to do this question. So the first thing I would like to do is uh, let's kind of let's look at this. So I see a not one one zero one one zero. So remember I like to kind of break apart the tiny pieces first. So when you have a not one one zero one one zero it's going to be the opposite. So I'm actually going to write some text underneath it. So I think this would turn into what? So 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So I just nodded it. So pretty much we have already completed this part. What's the next thing I would do? So the next thing I would do is maybe I could do this and, but let's go tackle the shift uh, dash 3 first. So, and we're going to do the shift. Well, what is this going to collapse down to? Well, it's going to collapse down to, uh, to since you're shifting three. So remember, these bottom three op these bottom three bits, they're going to turn into zeros because these top three bits are going to get removed. So this gets removed, this gets removed, this one also gets removed. But then these three bits just shift over into these three bits' position. So we see zero, one, zero. And I remember I said, when you shift, and when you remove bits, those get replaced on the other side with zeros. And since we're uh, removing three bits, we're going to replace with three zeros. So now we have collapsed this part down. And so now we have this and this bit string or this bit string. So now remember, uh, you would do and first and then you would do or. So let's work on this first. So I'm just going to move this bit string over here. And you generally want to align these bit strings so it's based on the bottom first. Uh, so this, in fact, I could replace this with another 0 here to align it. So you want to align it so it's the least significant bits first. 
So what's the AND evaluation of this bit string? Well, it's going to be zero everywhere except the third position. So it would be zero, 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 one, zero, zero, or yep, zero, zero, oh, zero, zero. So zero, 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 one, zero, zero, whoops, I need another zero. And now it's this or this bit string. So I'm just going to move this bit string. Let's move this over to the side. And so the what would the resulting again? Let's just align it so it's like that. And you want to let's put an extra zero here so both of them have the same amount of bits. And then when you were to do the or, so let me actually go back and show you what I did. So we finished this evaluation and, right? And we got this result from it. So now it's this. And this used to be from here. So we're oring. So this is the final step we have to do. And if we were to do this final step, well, the resulting bit string would be 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So simple or of these two. So I hope you understood a little bit more of how bit strings work. And I would say it just requires a lot of practice and for you to be meticulous and organized when you do these problems. And I would say thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos.